Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. A venture of an architecture is often thought about in the context of communicating between services or systems. But you can leverage events even within a monolith to gain the benefits of decoupling. To illustrate this, I'm gonna take a Blazor WebAssembly demo app that I have that's communicating to an ASP.NET Core backend. I'm gonna add some real-time UI updates, leveraging Kafka and SignalR. So when talking about a venture of an architecture and about decoupling, the reason is, is because producers are producing messages to topics that they're sending to the message broker, and they have no idea whether the consumers even exist. There could be zero consumers, there could be 100 consumers for a particular message. So what that means is the producer produces a message, publishes that to the message broker in a particular topic, and then we have consumers that are subscribing to that topic that ultimately get a copy of that message that they're gonna react to. So as I mentioned, I think most times people equate a venture of an architecture and messaging with microservices or SOA. So we have these different services and they're all decoupled via messaging. But the reality of it is, is that you can be using messaging even within a monolith. You're basically the producer and the consumer to allow that decoupling. So in the case of our ASP.NET Core app that I'm uh, creating here, is that I'm basically producing a message from ASP.NET Core, sending that to the message broker, but it's also the consumer, which means it's subscribing to topics for messages that were produced. So what this means is in one part of our app, we're producing messages, and another part of that same monolith, we're consuming messages. So I have two Blazor WebAssembly front ends that are communicating to the same ASP.NET Core backend. So when those interactions happen and there's something that happens within our domain, we're gonna publish events to the message broker, but within that same uh, ASP.NET Core backend in a different portion of it, we're gonna consume those messages that we're publishing so that we can use SignalR to communicate back down to Blazor to update the UI because something happened. The reason why this is important is because we don't have a mix match of our application logic dealing with the database and the actual domain that we're dealing with and also dealing with SignalR and the communication. Those are two separate concerns. And because we're using this publish subscribe of these events, we can separate dealing with Blazor and SignalR completely separate from our actual domain application logic. So the demo app that I'm using that I'm changing is the Blazor Workshop app. So I've made a fork of this app and all the changes that I'm making are available to my developer level members on my channel. So if you're interested in joining, go to my channel and click the join button. If you don't have the join button, it's because your country doesn't support it. So check out the link in the description for my Patreon. So here's the demo app completely unchanged. I'll show you how it actually works. I'm gonna order a pizza. Let's just enter. We'll enter where I'm from, Bell River. So what's happening here when I've actually placed my order, this actual Blazor app is just in a loop to basically re-pull the ASP.NET Core backend to get the updated status essentially of the order, um, which isn't really ideal. And really what's happening on the backend, it's not really doing anything. It's just saying after a certain period of time for demo purposes, let's change the status for right now it's like out for delivery. And then after more time, once we keep pulling, it's gonna show delivered. But nothing really is making that state change happen. So that's what I'm gonna actually implement. And when those state changes happen, when we like, for example, mark it as being out for delivery, that's what's gonna use events and Kafka and push that back to our consumer to publish this out to Blazor via SignalR to let it know to update. So we're not doing any of this polling anymore. So what I've done is I've created another Blazor WebAssembly app. Like I mentioned, I had two, and this one is called Kitchen. And what this is, is it's basically just a list. It just shows a list of what the orders are, and then we can view an order, and we can make it go through the state transition manually. So I can, once the order right now is in a place status, I can say start preparing, then I can say it's out for delivery, and then I can mark it as delivered. So the first thing I actually need to set up in my ASP.NET Core side to actually use events and publish and subscribe to them is I have Kafka running in a Docker container as well as MySQL. And I'm using a library called CAP, which is gonna be interacting and basically using Kafka underneath the hood. And as long with MySQL for some data persistence. So I have it configured here. Um, it also comes with a dashboard. I have everything configured in my startup. And what this allows me to do is I have an orders controller that's used in that kitchen, Blazor WebAssembly app. That's what it interacts with to get the list of orders and to see the orders. And just as every button click I had in that Blazor app was making a call. So when we said we were preparing and we we're in the prepare stage, that this is the action that we are actually hitting. So basically we're getting the order out for the one that we're said we're preparing. 
We're saving that state change. And then what we're doing is we're using cap to publish an event. So I've defined a bunch of different events here. This one is order being prepared event. We're just having the uh, order ID. Um, the next state change from that would be that the order was picked up and is um, out for delivery, picked up for delivery. And then we have another one for the order being delivered. And then at the very beginning of this whole thing, which I'll jump to later, is the order being placed. But these three events are what I was showing for clicking that button of making those state changes. So this is the part that's our producer. We're producing these messages, we're publishing them. So again, when you're preparing, we're pr uh, publishing that message. When you mark it out for delivery, we're gonna publish the event. When it's delivered, we're gonna publish the event. So this is the producer. So now on the flip side, we need consumers. So we're gonna have consumers for all these events where that we're publishing so that we can consume them and then use SignalR to interact with the Blazor apps. So I have this separate class that is basically the consumer. So I'm injecting my hub context from SignalR and I have this class that implements iCap subscribe. So this is our subscriber consumer. And then I have three different methods for all the three different events that we're gonna consume. So this cap attribute, uh, cap subscribe attribute defines that these are the methods that what we're actually consuming. So this is the particular topic. This is the, um, the consumer group, which I have as being unique. So every time one of those events is published, like order being prepared, I'm gonna use our hub context for SignalR, and I'm gonna send down this message of order being prepared, or the equivalent for each different type of event. Then in Blazor, I'm going to basically consume these messages to tell it to update the UI. So for my Blazor Razor page here, when the page loads, I make my WebSockets connection to SignalR, to my order hub, and then I have three different um, event handlers for order being prepared, pick up for delivery, and delivered. And when those occur, when sing we send that from ASP.NET Core down to the SignalR uh, connection, we're gonna refresh the actual page. All right, so demo time, let's see how this works. I'm gonna order a pizza, actually two pizzas. So now I'm just in a place, my status is place. I'm not doing any of that polling, there was none of that jazz going on anymore. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up our uh, kitchen side here. So this was our list of orders. So now when I'm going to start preparing, this is going to basically make that state change, publish the event, consume the event, and then use SignalR to tell the, the uh, Blazor app to update. So let's click start preparing. So we change status. Now I'm going to mark out for delivery. We see it changes and I can mark delivered. There we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is the exact same thing, but I've had a couple breakpoints to illustrate it going through the code flow. So the top panel here is my kitchen. This is where I'm doing my state tra uh, transitions. And the bottom one here is actually what our customer view is of their order that they just placed. So when I click start preparing in my kitchen, I hit the breakpoint that is now in the orders controller, and I'm gonna be publishing that event, the order being prepared event. When I jump over that, now I'm in the consuming side of ASP.NET Core, where I'm using my hub to context for SignalR that I'm now gonna send down to this one, this lower panel, which is our customer, to go from, from status place to preparing. So I've actually added this functionality a little bit more, where when you actually place an order, what I'm doing is I'm telling the Kitchen Blazor app to update its list automatically because there's a new order. So all my orders right now are marked as delivered. So on my customer facing side, I'm gonna place an order. So once I click this, this is gonna publish a placed order event, which the same flow is happening, but now I'm using this on the other side to tell the Kitchen uh, uh, Blazor WebAssembly app to update the UI. So once I click place order, this will update and we'll see our new order in here. And there's our new order. The beauty of event and event-driven architecture is really the decoupling. It's decoupling of concerns about things that are happening, events happening in your system, and being able to react to those events to do something else. In my example, I'm just using them to push uh, notifications down via SignalR, WebSockets, to let our UI know to update. But this can be a, for a lot of things, anything that you wanna to react to. It's about being reactive. So if something occurs in your system, like placing an order, and you need to send an email out, and you have a lot of complicated logic related to that, 
that can be done separately. You're not having all the code together when you click place order that all these things have to happen, like sending out an email and communicating via SignalR and making your database changes. You can separate these concerns out into their own units and deal with them separately and be reactive based off that event happening. So hopefully you realize that events and event-driven architecture are just an aspect of your architecture. You can be using a monolith and be doing event-driven architecture. You could be doing microservices and not even using events or event-driven architecture at all. So again, don't be afraid to explore how you can separate and decouple code and concerns within your application, even if you're using a monolith. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And as always, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.